Wow, what a beautiful view, right? Now, what if you couldn't make it to that destination to check that view out because your car's been running a little weird lately? Maybe it's because that's the kind of fuel you're dumping into your intake and the air fuel ratio when you should be dumping that much. What could cause it? Vacuum leaks, intake leaks. Let's get into it and solve it. All right, so now that we're back in the shop, we're gonna talk about intakes. Not just intakes, but vacuum leaks in general and how to solve them easily and have fun at it, actually. And if you end up diagnosing it and you have an intake leak and you wanna replace a whole intake, don't be intimidated. It's just a part in a car, it's easy to do. And we actually have videos to show you and we sell the parts on 1AAuto.com. This is the biggest contributor, oil. If you have an oil leak, man alive, that destroys gaskets. The petroleum in the oil expands the rubber if it's a rubber seal like this. And if it's paper, it just eats it up, disappears. So say you're driving, your engine light comes on, but yeah, you know, maybe it goes out the next day and then it comes back on three days later. Most of the time that could be an O2 sensor code or an EVAP code, nothing life-threatening. It's not flashing like a misfire, but it does come and go. Well, it's coming and going sometimes if you have a vacuum leak, especially if it's an intake due to the temperature outside. When the engine's cooler, it doesn't open up. So it's the engine's, the fitment's tighter, it won't get a vacuum leak. And as the car warms up, it starts to come. Now, if you don't know what a vacuum leak sounds like, I'm gonna give you a simulation of what the sound could sound like. So if you do have an engine light that comes on, you're gonna get probably an O2 sensor code that says like it's running rich. And what that means is that the O2 sensor is doing its job, don't replace it. The PCM is trying to make up for the vacuum leak. And what it's doing is dumping more fuel. And that was the reference of the water, overflowing amount of water compared to just a little bit amount of fuel that the car actually needs. It's just kind of a fun way to get there, get the mind working. But what we're gonna do is just show you where the airflow, how it comes into the car, into the engine, and mixes with the gas. So air and gas is what they call air fuel ratio. So you have your air box, everyone has one, and it's sealed. This particular car, most cars nowadays have a mass airflow sensor. So the air box, make sure it's always tight. Make sure the tubing going into the throttle body, they can't even be loose at all. Make sure connector's tight, take the air box off, check the air filter. So this air cleaner is what I would call moderately dirty. Yeah, it's not oil soaked. That's average road dirt, but I would replace this. Check your mass airflow sensor. If a mass airflow sensor is bad, you'll get an actual mass airflow sensor code. But what you won't get is a code other than a running rich. If you have a vacuum leak right here, that seal, if there's any air coming in to this box prior to this seal, it's gonna set a code. So that rubber seal cannot be swollen or missing. And that's the wire that's taking the actual reading of the airflow. That's important not to have oil on it or a leaf stuck in it. Now, normally you could clean this with mass airflow uh, cleaner. I still don't recommend that anymore. It's not just a wire sticking out and they used to have the circuit boards. It is sealed. That's all circuit right there. It's all circuit board. It's, you can do it to test it and say, hey, my car runs a lot better. Then I would always get a new one, replace it. Don't rely on that cleaned one to work properly. But we see no seal there, it's nice and tight. You can see how I have to push that back in. So that's good. So now we're gonna follow the line down into the engine and go from there. All right, so either way, you know the air box is on a car, whether it has turbo or not, and the air tube goes from the air box into the throttle body, into the intake. This particular model, we have it turbo. So we're gonna follow the turbo down. There's an air line intake that goes up underneath, and it's gonna come up over here where it goes right into that throttle body. And this is where we find a lot of problems. These clamps loosen up on that throttle body and then they sucks air right into the intake and it causes a vacuum leak. So now I wanna talk about if you do hear that sound, that sound that I displayed for you, that little sound, that would be a vacuum leak. But I wanna share a fun way to diagnose it with you. If you've got kids, have them come in, neighbors, make it a fun moment. If you have a shop vac, almost everyone has a shop vac, hook it up in reverse. So you're going to take the tube out of the vacuum and put it in the exit air and you're going to disconnect any tube you have to that throttle body. Hook your vacuum hose up to that, duct tape it, use some tape, whatever you got to do, make sure it's sealed. Turn that vacuum on so it's blowing air through, car doesn't need to be running, and while it's blowing air through you're going to spray it with soapy water. 
where it meets the head, any lines you see, don't forget your vacuum booster because that's a big contributor. And just spray it with soapy water and you'll start to see bubbles come out wherever that vacuum leak is. Man, what a great fun way to find it and safe too because you could use carb spray. Carb spray will actually, you have to have the car running. You start it and you spray it with carb spray. Now if you get close to the exhaust or no two sensor, you could actually damage it and the exhaust will actually could cause it to combust. A little flame here and there, not that much fun with the kids around or yourself personally. But if you have the bubbles blowing out, car's not running, it's not hot, it's not dangerous, no one's gonna get hurt, it's a quick way to diagnose. And it was free and you did it yourself. So I have one of our new intakes in the shop here, so I wanna take advantage of that. So I can show you kind of a close up of what's happening where that plastic intake meets the head. Now this is for a six cylinder and that's a four cylinder. So you would just have four circles like this and not the three on this side. But this is the type of gasket that I'm talking about. So it's plastic formed and it has this rubber O-ring that just sits in there. I'll just take my little screwdriver, pop it out for you so you can see it. And what happens is that's a good seal, it sits nice. It's raised up. If you take a good shut side angle of that, you can see how it's raised up above the plastic. So once those bolts go through these holes and it gets torqued down, it makes a nice squeeze like a sponge. But if oil hits this O-ring, petroleum makes the rubber swell. So it's gonna like overboat. It'll actually pop out of the hole that it sits in, the actual little cutout, and it could pop out like this, and it will start to spread out this way. And you'll get a vacuum leak. Pretty easy to diagnose with that vacuum in reverse, huh? With the bubbles, it's kind of cool. And also another contributor to the intake leaking or the gaskets having problems are just age and wear and tear. Sometimes the actual gasket gets so pressed from being torqued in there that it just over time wears and flattens itself out to the point that it's missing that gap, which makes a nice seal on the head and the intake. So don't forget, if you do have a vacuum leak, don't overlook what might have caused that vacuum leak. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell because then it turns on all your notifications and you won't miss any future videos. Really? You want me to hold this right up here? <laughs> I think he wants me to get all... <laughs> I just sucked it in. <laughs> mm, a little soap. <laughs>